Hey there berries, welcome to my Nautilus support guide for season 2021. If you haven't checked out my previous guides, we recently did Brand and Zyra, so if you haven't seen those yet, please make sure you check those out if you want to climb in low ELO especially. Also, if you're interested in me coaching you in a coaching class, uh, if you'll have a look under the doo underneath down there, for the Patreon link, I do Patreon classes once every month for my pledges. We did one last month, and if you are a pledge, you can see the uh, the VOD review of the classes and how those coaching sessions end up going. So if you're interested in the coaching uh, sessions or if you just want to support the channel and what I do, then the Patreon link is down below. Now we're going to be getting into the runes and the abilities and the items of Nautilus and any little advanced tricks that you can do on him. If you're not used to these guides, we talk about the runes here first, and then we go into a practice tour, and then I go through everything. It's usually quite raw, but I go into in-depth information, so hopefully after the end of this video, you're free to go and uh, practice Nautilus and play him to his full potential. Um, so yeah, sit back, enjoy, and uh, we'll go through it all. So Nautilus's rune pages are fairly standard. It's just an Aftershock page. Um, there are a couple of things that you can tweak on this page, um, but Aftershock is the primary rune and the only primary rune that you should be using on him. Uh, on the secondary rune here on the uh, on the Resolve Tree, you've got a few options here. Actually, all of these three runes here are viable for Nautilus. It's kind of personal preference. Uh, Nautilus is a self-cast shield, but you could actually get some benefit from the Shield Bash. Um, it, it's okay. It's not like a huge amount of extra damage or resistances that you get on yourself, um, but it's just it's just okay. It's an okay little effect that you can have on yourself. The Font of Life as well is okay. Uh, you're applying that debuff so that your allies can heal off the same target. It's okay again, once again. Demolish is probably my favorite out of all three, but only take this one if you know for sure that you're gonna be winning the laning phase gives you some extra gold in the lane with those turret plates. Next down here we have bone plating. Generally this is the rune that you're going to want to take. Um, if you feel like the enemy has a lot of poke damage potentially you could go into second wind. Um, conditioning is a nice little thing after 12 minutes increasing your tankiness. This could be an okay option if you're the only tank on the team uh, so you can just buff your stats up a little bit extra so that when you do go in you're going to be stronger. Um, in that mid game, kind of like mid to early mid game kind of time. Um, all of these runes, once again, are kind of viable. Uh, my favorite out of all of them is probably the bone plating. Um, I'm not too keen on second wind, uh, but I do like conditioning as well. So for, for me, it's between the bone plating or the conditioning. Third down here, uh, the only rune that you want to really look at is the tenacity rune, the unflinching. Uh, gives you extra tenacity basically so you know you don't want to be crowd controlled too much as Nautilus otherwise you're stuck at the front not being able to do anything yourself so this tenacity gets you in and out of those situations relatively nicely. Inspiration secondaries um, once again you've got a few things here that you can switch out the cosmic insight and the hex tech flash uh, traption or hex tech flash we'll just call it um, is probably the what most pros take um, but you can make you can change these to make it accommodate to your kind of play style in the lane phase so hex tech flash is something that it's its own separate skill in itself so when your flash is on cooldown uh, flash gets replaced with this hex tech flash um, i'll try and show it off in the practice tool uh, in a, a little section um, if you're not sure in that one, but uh, Hex Tech Flash is something that is generally picked up on tank supports and can be extremely useful when utilizing the bot lane brushes uh, to make plays essentially. So, Hex Tech Flash is incredibly powerful. Uh, Cosmic Insight is a rune that is nice as here as well because it reduces your summoner spells, so it means that your flash will come back off cooldown as quicker and also your ignite or exhaust, whatever you're running. Uh, alternatively, you can do something like this with the Hex Tech Flash and Cookies. Cookies gives you some nice sustain. If you find you're having mana issues in the lane, which might happen quite early on in your play testing with Nautilus, then something like Hex Tech plus Biscuits or Biscuits plus Cosmic Insight is something that you're probably looking more towards. Um, but yeah, Biscuits, these, these three runes, you can play around with them to your fitting. 
There isn't really anything else here I'd recommend. So just stick with the Hextech Flash, Cookies, or Cosmic Insight. If you're a fresher player, uh, maybe something like the Biscuits and the Cosmic Insight uh, is, is what you're looking for. But I would really encourage you to learn how to use the Hextech Flash, which is what we're going to cover uh, a little bit in the video. In these little stat runes here, what you have here is absolute basic tank rune stats. Uh, these are fairly common across the board. On Nautilus, you do have quite a bad uh, auto attack. You, there is an ability that can auto reset uh, your auto attack, which we'll cover in the video. Um, but you could also dip into attack speed as well, which helps your ward clearing and it can help you auto attack multiple different champions in a team fight, which you might want to do to land your passive which we'll talk about later. Um, but if you're for starting off, I'd highly recommend the Ability Haste. If you find that the auto attack speed on Nautilus is really frustrating for you, then definitely look at the attack speed. That is a fine option as well. That's all for the runes. As you can see, you know you can tweak a few things here, but Resolve Inspiration is definitely what you're looking for throughout the entire game and pretty much for every game. Um, it's more personal preference on what you're tweaking here apart from potentially the bone plating you could you know pick anything here depending on the laning phase if you're up against you know hard engage bot lane bone plating gets you a lot of value second wind is good ish against people that poke you relatively often like Ezreal's and Lux's in the bot lane and conditioning you know if you're not sure you can always just dip into conditioning um I think you know that's a fairly safe rune that activates as a passive after 12 minutes that's fine all of these runes are generally viable um, but you have the more option customization customization to pick and choose right now we're going to be heading into the practice tool and what we're going to be doing is looking over the abilities for you and i'll talk about the hex tech flash in the ability section as well so let's just pick us some nautilus with the Aftershock build, I'm going to use the basic skin so you guys don't get too confused with his other skins. As mentioned at the start of the video, Nautilus is probably the most noob friendly tank. Um, Leona is probably another one that is very noob friendly. Um, he's more noob friendly than Blitzcrank just because he's got more utility tools. Blitzcrank generally just has his primary hook, whereas Nautilus has a hook, an easier to land hook, honestly. And he has some extra utility tools that you can have if you miss the hook. So very, very, uh, you know, probably the best hook champion that I could probably recommend a new player. And honestly, he's fairly good, not only from like iron and bronze, but all the way up to challenger as well. He is frequently played um, at all ELOs and is one of the most popular hook uh, champions. Actually, Thresh is probably the highest and then it's Nautilus. Um, so yeah, Nautilus is a very, very, very good pick. Uh, in soda queue at the moment as of season 2021 so first what we're going to be doing here is we are going to be uh, deactivating the minions and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to start looking at some of his abilities so let's put an enemy target dummy and an ally one and let's get some of those levels in as well so we can level up these abilities okay so Nautilus has a very key passive uh, it's quite unique that you need to be making sure that you're paying attention to in a fight. His passive on his auto attack roots the target for a short duration and then you can see the circle that goes around the target. When that dissipates you can reroute the same target. So every auto attack won't apply the route. There is going to be that little delay. Um, but as you can see, it can be pretty powerful in combination of your other abilities later on to get that chain crowd control through and lock down one target. Now Nautilus is his Q, is his hook. Now his hook's particularly interesting. And honestly, this uh, this tool tip is a little bit misleading because uh, it's, just, it's just standard hook. Um, when you hook, not only do you pull the target, you pull yourself as well to the target. So you kind of meet halfway at that halfway point. But there's lots of like issues that you can use with the Q hook to your advantage. Um, at the end of the hook is kind of like a giant lollipop. Um, as you can see, you know, Thresh's hook is an anchor. 
but it's not indicated this in the indicator at all. It's just showing it as a straight line. But at the end, it is, has like a lollipop effect where it is very, very generous on its uh, hook potential sometimes. So you do need to factor that in when you're doing the hooks, particularly at the end. Um, you might see some videos on Reddit or on YouTube or things of where the Norsus hook acts absolutely whacked getting through minions, but it is an extremely powerful tool and the easiest hook to land in the entire game if complete, if I'm just flat out honest. It's very, these animations are very subtle as well. Another uh, thing on his hook as well is that you can also hook onto terrain. Hooking onto terrain uh, reduces the cooldown um, by 50% and the mana cost is also reduced by 50%. So there's a couple of things that you can use this. You, this is a quality of life so if you're coming back from base after a recall, you can just hook on objects when you're coming back into the lane, like hook onto the inhibitor when coming back out here, etc. Just to get back into the lane a little bit quicker. Also, you can use this as a gap closer as well. So say, for example, you know, our hook range is out of range of this target. Um, we can hook the the wall here just to make up some of that distance and because hooking to the wall reduces the cooldown of the hook by fi by 50 percent it means there's not too long of a wait to be able to re-engage onto this target so you can definitely use this as a gap closer if you can't reach onto the primary target which you might want to do with your ultimate which we'll talk about later in an advanced combo move you can also use this to get away. So if you're getting junk, uh, ganked by the uh, the enemy jungler, you can just use this to a wall and just zip away. And uh, you know it can effectively save your life. Um, you know, there's not much you can do about your teammate getting caught, your AD carry, but you can definitely preserve your own life by uh, bailing out of a, of a fight for sure. Norsus's W uh, is a shield. And also whenever he auto attacks a target, it does splash damage to all targets around it and also leaves a little damaging dot effect on the target. This dot effect is also applied to everyone around uh, and the shield scales based off his maximum HP and scales off ability power. So his W is also an auto attack reset. So if we his auto attacks in general are pretty slow. I do have the 10% attack speed rune in on the tree. I think it's a bit faster right now because we're level 18, but generally it's a lot slower than this. The 10% attack speed rune is helping, but you can use this W as an auto attack reset. So if we do auto W auto, it's a bit quicker. It's much more noticeable when you're lower level, uh, when your auto attack speed is a lot slower. Unfortunately, my apologies that I can't show that off properly here. But uh, level one, you'll notice his auto attack is extremely slow. So this W can also help you uh, just do extra damage really on a target or help you clear a ward out particularly quickly. So if the enemy puts down a ward, it's got three charges, auto W and then auto might get it. You might have to rely on an AD carry to still hit it once, but it does guarantee that you get two hits on a ward so that you, know, you have a greater chance of clearing it out as opposed to you only being able to hit it once. So it's just an extra DPS tool. So ideally, when you are doing poke trades or you know just fighting in general, you want to do auto and then W just to get that auto attack reset off. That's the primary kind of thing that you want to do there. Also, this is E is his Riptide. So he explodes outside of him. There's three charges that comes out: one inner, one medium, and then one outer. If anyone enemies get hit by this, they get slowed. Uh, for a very short period of time. The slow is uh, increased per point. Um, so you can max this one second. I'll talk about his skill maxing second. Um, but the slow is okay. It's just an extra tool to keep the target. So once you have done your main engage, it's just to help keep them in as much as possible uh, to help stop them from getting away. Nordstellis is a final ability. His ultimate is this depth charge. So what we can actually do here, we can spawn some other target dummies just to showcase this off a little bit better. So when Nordstellis uses his depth charge, he travels in a line and any enemies that are in the way underneath the, uh, the ulti, uh, they get knocked up. 
So this ultimate will always land on the target unless it's the spell shield um, or if they stasis. It will say if they flash away or blink away, they get, it will always chase after them. It's a, it's a point and click spell. It will always just follow them and chase after them. So it does damage on the units going up, but it does the most damage on the target that you've targeted. Um, and an advanced combination with this, what we mentioned earlier with our Q, say for example, the primary target that we wanted to hit here was the, the one at the back. We can use our Q as a gap closer onto the target, say if they weren't in range. We could Q to the wall and then use the old T then to then gap close and then hit that primary target. So it's just a funky little tip there that you can use there for yourself. Now we're going to talk about some minor combinations that you can do. So the main, as you can see that with the root on his passive with the auto attack, you have the hook, you have the ultimate, and you have the slow. Pretty much almost everything on your kit has some form of crowd control um, or CC effect. So you don't want to overlap them too much because the worst thing you can kind of do is the it's, there's some situations where this is okay if you're like really really just need to get onto the target as quickly as possible which is ulting and then queuing but what you're kind of doing there in that situation is is that you're cancelling out some of the airborne effect by doing the hook the most ideal situation with nautilus is is that you're engage, engaging with your hook applying that passive down just so that they're rooted you knock them up and then slow them so that when they do eventually come out of that effect, they're unable to, to move too far. And then from that situation in this fight, you know, if you're near another target, you can throw an auto attack over as well just to make sure that they're rooted during the effect uh, of the of the fight and just keep chasing up on whoever you can in terms of the, you know in the fight or potentially looking to bail if the fight is not looking too good with the hook to a wall. So yeah, as you know, as mentioned before, the most key thing on Nautilus is is finding a way to get onto a target. Minions can obviously block the hook, so you can't just hook throw it the hook through the minion. So you're always looking for different angles and, and avenues to get in. So once you hit level six, you know, a cheeky engage can always just be hook to the wall, ulti, chase up, root with by the time you catch up, you can, you can root them with your auto attack. By then your hook will nearly or be off cooldown. Um, you know, you'd be landing your E to slow them down to make sure they don't get away too much and then you can then hook them back in and just buy some more time for your AD carry to follow up. Lots and lots of uh, crowd control effect tools and that's why he's so powerful in Soto Q. Um, and also once again, don't forget to utilize that auto attack reset when fighting. It's very, very powerful uh, just to get it particularly early. Um, all, all the damage can add up for sure. So those are the, the the main abilities and some some minor combos on the uh, on the Nautilus. But uh, if you can avoid the main one that you want to try and avoid is just doing ulti and then queuing immediately afterwards. Doing a delayed queue is the best. So doing this and then delaying your queue, so it's not completely stacking over the airborne effect effect of your ultimate is is the most ideal because you don't want to do this and it's just effectively cancelling out one of your crowd controls so if you can give it some some breathing space between the two combos if you do engage with your ulti first then that's the most ideal um one other thing in some narrow passages you got to be careful because uh nautilus's hook is the only one that doesn't go through terrain so yes you can use your hook to get away but also you could have some situations where you know, you want to hook someone and then you, this bit of wall sticks out and you, you end up hooking the wall instead. So that is the downside of Nautilus. That is his, that's the big downside is that our, our enemies are effectively safe if they are, if they are behind terrain. Um, but other than that, Nautilus is extremely powerful in pretty much any other situation. So he excels the best in lane and in the rivers because there's so much more open space. But when you get into like these little nooks and crannies of the, of the of the jungle, it can become a bit more difficult to find the perfect kind of a space to engage. 
Next, we're going to be talking about the ability skill order. So maxing your Q, your hook is the most important thing. And then I generally personally like maxing the W more uh, first, just because of the extra shield amount that you get and it beefs you up. Uh, that's probably the most important thing as well if you're the only tank on the team, just to, just to make you a little bit more stable as a tank. Um, but also maxing your E second is a is a fine possibility, especially if you aren't the main tank or if you aren't the only tank on the team. It does provide your team with a little bit more utility, especially in those mid-game team fights where you can hit multiple people with your E to slow them down. So everyone here would be getting maxed out 50% slow, which, you know, it doesn't last for a huge amount of time, only 1.25 seconds, but it's better than nothing. And the damage does go up. Uh, ever so minorly. But I personally, as I mentioned, prefer doing uh, Q, then W, then E in terms of maxing. But if you want to eat max E second, give it a try and see how it works for you. You might enjoy it more. Next, we're going to be looking at the Hextech Flash. Since we're still kind of in the items, uh, in the abilities category, my apologies. So if we burn Flash... Flash goes on cooldown, and as you can see, after a short period of time, we'll have access to Hex Tech Flash. I would highly recommend you go into a practice tool to test this out yourself if you aren't familiar with it, because it can be a bit clunky to use for the very first time. So, it's not instant now. The Flash, you have to channel it down. So, whatever you've assigned your Flash button, you need to hold it down for a few seconds, and then when you let go, you flash into that direction of where your cursor is. You can change the cursor direction at the last second, um, but also it's very obvious you know, that the person's cursing, casting Hextech Flash. That's why you want to be in a brush. If you utilize yourself in a brush, the enemy can't see you. And if I put a, uh, a dummy down here, you know, just to give you the, the real visual effect, you know, so say if the enemy's there, uh, we could probably hook from that distance actually. Let's push it to around about here. There's an enemy there. We know the enemy's there. Uh, but there's no way we're going to be able to hook it from this distance. Now with Hextech Flash, we channel it. We move our cursor to that direction. And it just gives us that extra oomph of engagement space that, that we need. Uh, it's really good in the laning phase in particular. Uh, you know, if your flash is on cooldown and you're roaming towards mid as well, you can do a nice hex tech flash play, like over this wall here, and engage onto the the enemy mid laner. Uh, there's a lot of different tricks that you can do here uh, in terms of using hex flash, but the most important is try and make sure that the enemy doesn't have vision on you, uh, because that's where you're going to be utilizing it the most. Like for example, if you're on blue side and you're at this, this wall here, you can hex tech flash over this wall. And then easily engage. So as you can see, you know, having to go all the way around, and there's no surprise. So you can do a lot of good tricks with Hextech Flash, and that's why it's so powerful. Um, if you do get attacked by an enemy champion when it is off cooldown, it will go on a 10 second cooldown. So if I got hit by the enemy AD carry here, then this will go on a 10 second cooldown. So you know, when you're hiding in these brushes, try not to get hit by any enemy skill shots. Otherwise, it will put it on a 10 second cooldown again. And then you can see the little circle to the right of it. Um, that means when that's full, that means your flash is back up and you're ready to you know, use your normal flash. So don't get caught out. The very few t first few times I used Hex Tech Flash, um, you know, I thought I had Hex Tech Flash, but then I actually flashed straight away because my flash came off cooldown. So do try and pay attention. But as I said, give it a go and practice tour just so that you're used to the animation. Uh, and as I said before, you can change the direction immediately. So if you suddenly decide, uh oh, I don't want to engage that way, I need to get out, you can just fling your mouse over to the other side and uh, hex tech flash the other way. So that's the hex tech flash, that's all your abilities, and that's your ability skill orders. We're now going to be covering the item section. Tank supports in general have a very similar build, so if you know how to build one tank, you can build the rest pretty much the same way. So, uh, Relic Shield is the the absolute normal start with the two half potions so you go ahead and click and take that that's because nautilus has ap scaling on 
everything apart from his passive. His passive actually scales off levels and physical damage. Also a side note on the on the passive, the root duration also increases based on level as well. So you have a couple of options here. Um, when you're playing a tank support, it's pretty important on your first buy to have at least boots one in. Um, that's because you know you're always looking to engage um, and you need to find those plays. So if you're slower than the, en the enemy, you're going to have a really tough time chasing up and uh, finding a good play there. So always look to buy boots first. Ideally, boots the, the boots upgrade as well. Uh, and boots are going to be completely dependent on what the enemy team composition has. So if you feel like you're able to roam around the map a lot and make plays in the mid lane, maybe work with your jungler, um, this is probably more for like gold plus I'd recommend. Uh, the Moby boots are the choice for you. Otherwise, you're looking for something a little bit more defensive. Uh, plated steel caps if you're up against a lot of physical damage and auto attack champions. That's a really good item choice. The other one is Mercury Treads as well. Uh, this gives you tenacity once again in combination with the tenacity rune you've taken. You really shouldn't be stunned or crowd controlled too much. Um, this could be pretty useful against, uh, even though it could be against a lot of physical damage, the enemy team can still have a lot of crowd control. Like if you're playing it up against a, uh, a Leona Ash bot lane where Ash's arrows and, uh, and she can slow you down a lot and you're playing against Leona where she has multiple stuns, the Merc Treads are going to save you and help you in those team fights to engage or disengage. So always look to try and upgrade your boots to maximum as quickly as possible. <clears throat> uh, you might find that along the way of completing your boots, you know, you don't quite have enough to complete them into the full Merc Treads or the Steel ca uh, Caps. So you can, might want to like, you know, put by one or two components from the Locket of Iron Solari. Um, this is the mythic that I would highly recommend you use the first time that you play Nautilus. And honestly, once again, with all the tank supports, is a very s stable uh, item selection locket is very good in Sodaki right now. Just noticed I don't have quite enough money to actually buy the item, so let me just add some money into my bags. If only as it was easy as that in Sodaki. Uh, so you want to ideally link into the Kindle gem first because it's cheaper than the Aegis by a considerable amount and uh, that it gives you the 10 ability haste and the 200 health is nice generic tanky stats. Health, um, you know, is going to mitigate you dying against both attack damage and magic damage. Um, whereas, you know, if you're only buying individual components, you're only gearing up against one. Um, you know, the resistant values in, in, in League are very good generally, especially early in the game. But getting the extra cooldown reduction is what takes it over. So the extra 10 ability haste first and then working your way in towards the Aegis to then complete your locket. Now locket you want to pop as soon as you can start seeing some AoE effects coming down or if teammates are about to die. A uh, locket uh, shield does decay over time so when you pop your locket you'll get the shield but as you can see it's depleting slowly over time. So if you can see a big area of effect uh, ability coming through, um, you want to try and pop the locket just before that lands to get the maximum shield value. If you've used your shield like two seconds ago, the, the shield amount of value that you're going to have to block that uh, is going to be quite low. So um, unfortunately for newer players, you're going to have to get used to having it to press another button in terms of item usage, but locket is extremely important and key to understand and uh, use in fights. Extremely ex ex extra, not effective health for yourself, but also for your teammates. The 200 to 300 shield can definitely come in clutch sometimes. Moving on into the uh, the tankier runes, my, uh, the tankier items. The, my favorite tank item on second is Thormail. Uh, Nautilus has many, many, many different, uh, different abilities that do hard crowd control. You've got his ultimate that can knock up multiple targets. You've got his hook. You've got his root. Uh, his Riptide won't affect, won't apply the 60% Grievous Wounds that Thormel does, um, but everything else in your kit does. So it's hugely important you know, if you need Grievous Wounds and you're up against the physical damage team, Thormel is 
really, really strong in my opinion right now. So Thormel is a very good secondary item, uh, second item going into uh, attack damage teams. If you're not fully sure about the 60%, so 60% Grievous Wounds gets applied uh, when you do crowd control to the enemy target basically, but it has to be that hard crowd control and mobilizing them. If you are up against more magic damage classes, then it's a slightly harder item uh, build. You could build into health with Knight's Vow. That item's okay. It's pretty cheap. It gives you some cooldown reduction and gives your uh, whoever you target. So with Knight's Vow, you have to, to specify an ally after you purchased it to protect them, essentially. Um, so when you're near them, 15% of the damage that they take goes to you instead. And if they have under 50% HP, you get 35% movement speed when moving towards them to help try and save them. So overall, this item is okay. It's nothing too crazy. Um, it's just an okay value item. The stats on it, the base stats, aren't that great. The active is only okay. Um, but as I said before, there aren't too many magic resist options. You could look into Abyssal Mask. It's more expensive gives you a lot of raw magic resistance and when you immobilize a champion they take 10% increased damage for four seconds so from your entire team essentially so when Norsus has good single target focus start so you can help increase the damage that that person takes by 10% which is good is is a, is a good item for sure doesn't re provide your team with like any like extra utility but can give them a bit more damage towards the same target so overall it's it's an okay item if you need that magic resistance not quite as good as the armor equivalent in my opinion as full male but the abyssal mask has you know it gives you that magic resistance option zeke's horrible item don't take at the moment um i do not recommend this item at all um hopefully we'll see some buffs going into you know 2022 or something but zeke's needs honestly a huge revamp just avoid this item at all costs right now uh, another item you could look into taking but is even more expensive than the Thormel or the Abyssal Mask is a Gargoyle Stoneplate. Now this item will make you extremely tanky, not against armor but also against magic resistance as well. Um, but it gives you a massive shield when you use the active. So this is like the ultimate tank item, however it is so damn expensive that honestly you should just be leaning towards the utility of the Thormel or the Abyssal Mask. So this is much more of a of a luxury item choice. So once you say, for example, you've gone Thormel, you've got Locket, Thormel, and you know you need to make sure you keep buying control wards. You know you haven't got that much inventory space room for for much else. So you're just picking up whatever you can in uh, in order to stay alive more in a team fight. Um, you know, you, as I said, you know, Gargoyle is like the ultimate item that you want to be maybe like leaning towards. The Aegis as like a non-competed item is decent, 30 MR, 30 armor, and 10 ability haste, which gives you a bit more cooldown reduction. So your final kind of build could end up like looking like this at the end of the game. Uh, this is fairly standard. And one thing I should mention is once you've completed your Relic Shield quest in lane, Make sure you convert that into an oracles lens. That will help you look out, look out for traps and enemy wards as well. So this is what your inventory should kind of look like at the end of the game, and that's what you're kind of like gearing and working towards. Um, a noob recap on the relic shield, if you're not uh, aware of it. So you see these little when you do have relic shield, these little orbs around you indicate how many passive stacks you have. On the relic shield so as you can see here just above my portrait at the bottom is a little number three ideally you want to be using one of these charges on a cannon minion and then you're using the other two on melee minions so you don't want to basically when you last hit um a cannon minion or a melee minion with these charges the not only do you get the gold from the minion itself but it also goes to the nearest target so if you auto attack a cannon minion to execute it off with the effect, because you, you're melee with Nautilus, if the, the cannon minion is under 50% HP, you hit that with an auto attack. You get the cannon minion gold, and so does your nearest ally if they're in range. The range is quite generous. 
um, I'd say the range is probably roughly the same as your hook range. So if your AD carry isn't in hook range, they're probably not going to get the gold from that. Once you accumulate 500 gold from this, uh, from the Reddit Shield, it also upgrades once you're out of combat. It'll give you three ward charges, and then it, it can you can keep doing that process up to 1,000 where the item will fully complete, and then you'll have a maximum of four ward charges on the item. Uh, the item, the ward charges can be refreshed when you do recall back to the fountain. So that's everything in terms of the, the items, you know, if you, the ultimate late game build, I mean, as I said, this is probably what you're going to be looking at maximum for like 99% of your games. You know, finishing this off, you would be finishing off the gargoyle stone plate, you would have another item active to use. And then also you could pick up a ward stone uh, instead of the, uh, of the control ward and then upgrading that as well by placing at least 20 wards in a game so that you can still have control wards with this item um, but basically you know when you up, when it upgrades when you place more wards so when you place 20 wards it upgrades into watchful wardstone which gives you 25 ability haste and allows you to um, store three control wards in the same slot and also increases uh, the amount of stealth wards that you can put down on the map which is you know the wards from your relic shield so you can put four down on the map as opposed to the the three cap and you can also put an extra control ward down, so up from, from one to two control wards on the map. And you can have the option to upgrade it, this up again with raw cash, uh, 1.3k I believe it is for the full upgrade, uh, might be 1.2k, roughly around about that amount. Um, and it gives you even more ability haste, 10% movement speed which can help you engage. Um, and also converts it into a legendary item. So you know, every time you complete an item, included Relic Shield all the way up to the top. So if you manage to make it into the bulk of the mountain, that counts as a legendary item. The uh, the Gargoyle Stone Plate is a legendary item. The Thor Mail is a legendary item. The boots are not. That's the only thing that isn't when it's fully converted. The boots don't count as a legendary item. But every legendary you have uh, goes towards that mythic passive no matter what. Uh, mythic you have and makes it stronger so in Lockett's case every time you fully complete a legendary item the mythic passive of the uh, armor and magic resistance aura is improved by plus two so with two legendary items in our inventory we're getting four bonus armor and magic resistance given to our team to, for a, a nine value so everyone standing ne next to us gets nine armor and nine magic resistance Hopefully that was, you know, enough for you to absorb and take in. Um, yeah. <laughs> the item system can be a little bit confusing for newer players. Um, I did my best to go through it as best as I could. Um, there isn't too much to deviate in terms of items. And if you are, like, looking at a key fight, like the Baron fight is about to happen, or an Elder Dragon, then do look, if you do have an extra 500, uh, cash then do look to buying an elixir of iron lasts only for three minutes but it gives you 300 health 25 percent more tenacity and you leave a little trail behind you as well you see there's little sparkly glitter things that are leaving on the floor if an ally walks into that as well they get 15 percent movement speed just a little extra for the next like big fight coming up and can make all the difference whether or not you know you're going to be able to tank stuff or not going into the next team fight so I hope this Nautilus guide helps you out. Uh, if you do have any questions or queries, feel free to ask on twitch.tv slash bizzleberry. I'm live almost every day on there. Uh, you know, if, uh, if I'm not playing League, then you feel free to ask League questions if you, you, know, if you want to. Or you can leave a comment section, comment down in the section down below and I'll be more than happy to, to help you. And as mentioned before, on my Patreon, I'll be leaving a link down there, patreon.com slash bizzleberry. I do coaching classes and a few other little fun things on the Patreon as well uh, for people that pledge and support what I do. So thank you to everyone who has done that. And also, if you want support advice as well, discord.gg slash bizzleberry, if you haven't got Discord. Uh, well, if you have Discord, you know, you know how to use it, but uh, discord.gg slash bizzleberry. Discord is basically a chat room. We've got roughly 2,500 members uh, in the Discord channel, 
most of them support me so you know if I'm not around to help answer a question I'm sure someone uh, you know it will be more than happy to help you out we're a pretty friendly community and you know we help each other out uh, all the time so if you want to join that community as well feel free to, to join the discord other than that I think I've mentioned everything that I need to do including self-promotion um, I wish you all the best in your uh, Nautilus games and um, yeah good luck have fun and use that hex tech flash in the practice tour give that a little warm up before you go into an actual game because uh, it might catch you out the first couple of times if you do want to use hex tech flash make sure you've got the auto refresh cooldown enabled because if you have it on auto refresh and you flash oh never mind it does work huh. I wonder if they changed that but that hex tech flash yeah just flash make sure you got hex tech flash and you can just practice your hex tech flashes all right all right, I'm going now for real. Bye-bye. Good luck.